Hi there, my name is Colin Daniel and uh, in this short video today I'm going to be introducing you to uh, state and transition simulation models. And this is just, uh, I'm going to be leading you through a short PowerPoint to do so. Um, but much of this material is based on a recent publication of ours in the journal Methods in Ecology and Evolution. Uh, in which, so if you want more details on the approach, you can go to the journal's website and download uh, the paper for free. Um, so to start, just a little bit of background. You know, there are uh, literally dozens of different landscape simulation models that have been developed, if you look in the literature. And you can organize these in various ways, but uh, the simplest is just to group them into two broad categories. The first of these are models that have been used to project changes in vegetation over time, principally developed by ecologists. And there's also sort of a parallel group of models that have been developed principally by geographers uh, in order to predict uh, changes in land use and land cover change. Now, you know, one of the limitations of these models is that most of them have been developed for pretty specific questions. You know, at least they've been developed in one of these two categories, most of them, and often even more specifically than that. And furthermore, a number of them have been developed for specific geographic regions. And this makes it difficult to then take these models often and apply them to new systems and new questions. And this is, forms, you know, one of the major motivations for the state and transition simulation model approach, or the STSM as we call it for short. And that is, STSMs have been purposely designed to be as general as possible, uh, really trying to provide a general framework for modeling any kind of landscape change. And as a result, they can and have been applied to a wide range of systems and questions at uh, a number of different spatial scales as well. So that's one of the key features of them is their generality. The other is uh, their stochasticity. These models, as I'll try and uh, show you over the next few slides, are inherently stochastic. And this makes it, at least conceptually, uh, relatively straightforward to then represent uncertainty in your projections of landscape change. So how does an STSM work? Well, like just about all landscape simulation models, you start with your landscape, a particular point in time, and you divide it into a series of spatial simulation cells. And then with an STSM, you go and you assign each one of those simulation cells to a discrete state. And in this very simple example, I show a model in which we've got three possible uh, states for each cell in the landscape. Now with an STSM you can also then assign each one of your cells an initial age. Now this is optional but most of the time uh, age is also used along with state in an STSM. And once you've assigned an initial state and age to each cell you then develop what we call a pathway diagram. And this diagram essentially describes the possible transitions that can occur between each one of your possible states. And so, you know, in this simple example, I show three possible transitions between my states, sort of succession in the absence of any disturbance, fire and timber harvest. And typically, much like a Markov chain, you would assign a probability for the occurrence of each one of these transitions over time. Now, if you then have an initial state and age for each one of your cells, and you have this diagram with pathways and probabilities, you can then sort of roll the dice and simulate the state, the fate of the state and age of each cell over time using the pathways and probabilities in this diagram. And in this way, the state and age of each cell become discrete random variables. And if we repeat that process, for all of the cells in our landscape, then we then end up with one possible projection for the future state and age of every cell on our landscape. And we call this a single Monte Carlo realization of the STSM. Now, if we start all over and repeat this process multiple times, 
each time we roll the dice, we're going to project slightly different uh, future states and age for each of our cells, and we can use this variation between realizations to then estimate not only the mean projected uh, state and age of every cell, but also some measure of the uncertainty around that mean based on the variability we get across our realizations. Now, you know, one question we get asked all the time is, well, this just, this looks like a Markov chain. How, how is this any different than a traditional Markov chain? Well, you know, there are several differences, and it's actually these differences which are critically important and what fundamentally distinguish an STSM from a simple Markov chain. The first is that, as I've already shown, you can track the age of each cell over time. Now, like a Markov chain, you can assign probabilities to transitions between states. I've already sort of shown this. But once you're tracking age now in your model, you can also now with an STSM make some of those transition probabilities conditional upon the age of each cell over time. So that's one of the differences. A second important difference is that Unlike Markov chains, where all of the transitions must be expressed as probabilities, with an STSM, you have the option to specify one or more of your transition pathways using a target area rather than a probability. And this approach is often used to represent management-oriented um, transitions for which, when we're modeling, we might have some idea of the specific level of that transition we wish to simulate over time. And uh, the last thing is that major difference is that um, with Markov chains, you're only allowed to have one possible transition pathway between any pair of states. However, in a STSM, importantly, we can have many processes all represented independently between pairs of states. So for example, here on the screen I show that transitions between states C and D can occur both due to fire and due to harvest. And, and that is another important difference uh, between STSMs and straight um, traditional Markov chains. Now another key feature of STSMs is that we sort of mentioned they're spatially explicit. And what do we mean by that? Well, we mean that um, the behavior of any one cell in a simulation is not necessarily independent of the behavior of its neighbors. And as you can imagine, there are many processes uh, involved in landscape change for which there is some kind of spatial dependence in that process uh, across the cells in our landscape. And for example here, you know, the classic process is that, that behaves non-independently over space is fire. Fire, uh, you know, spreads out in discrete events and uh, does not occur independently cell by cell. So in an STSM, you can account for this kind of spatial autocorrelation in your transitions by generating any pattern you like for those probabilities over time. In this example here, we might have an external fire model that, that's called and generates the pattern of expected fire probabilities for each one of our time steps in a simulation. And once we have that expected pattern of probabilities, however we derive it, we can feed that back into the pathway diagram and use it to then force the probabilities for that particular set of cells and time step, and as a result, generate just about any pattern we like in transitions across our landscape. Now, a final feature I just want to point out, it's something that's been added quite recently to STSMs, is now the ability not just to track state and age, as you traditionally have done in STSMs, but to also be able now to integrate continuous variables into your simulation models. And we call these continuous variables that you simulate forward for each cell uh, stocks. And the way this works is for each cell now, in addition to your uh, 
state and age of your cell. You can also characterize each cell according to the level it has for one or more continuous stocks. And so here we show a what we call a flow um, diagram, flow pathway diagram, similar to the pathway diagram for states and transitions, in which we describe a number of flows that can move material between the stocks that we're simulating over the course of our simulation. Now, this sort of stock flow approach is nothing new. Um, you know, there's software out there that, uh, that has been doing this for, for, for many years. Um, however, what's unique about the integration of stocks and flows into STSMs is twofold. First, um, like the states and transitions, these stocks and flows are spatially explicit and their levels can be modeled stochastically. And secondly, probably most importantly, we can make the flows in our stock flow model um, conditional upon states and transitions in the state and transition side of the STSM. So for example here, you might imagine that in a particular time step of a model, you have a, certain, a fire transition that occurs on a cell. You can use that to then trigger a series of fire emission flows that move carbon from one stock to another over time in response to that transition. So that uh, briefly summarizes sort of conceptually how STSMs work. If you want to actually build one of these, um, it's you know the concepts are pretty straightforward. You could you could easily do that and from scratch in R or in Excel. But if uh, what we found is that over the years, if you're trying to build large, complicated models, perhaps running over millions of simulation cells with hundreds of Monte Carlos, um, you know trying to deal with that in sort of uh, rudimentary software environment becomes very challenging. So you know over say probably 20 years or so, um, a bunch of software has been developed, uh, you know, a series of software products um, have been developed, the latest of which, the current one, is called STSIM. And this is free software that's been developed through the support of a, a number of agencies in the U.S. and is available on a number of platforms uh, to help you develop and run STSMs. Now, that sort of ends uh, my presentation for today. Um, if uh, you're looking for additional information, I'll just point you to a couple of sources. The first, if you want to see examples of uh, how this approach has been used for different applications, I list a couple of websites here that provide that kind of information. If you want more information on the uh, STSIM software, show here where you can download it, um, where you can get some more documentation, and uh, at the Getting Started page there's also a number of additional YouTube videos leading you through the basics of the software. And thank you very much. Uh, that's the end of my presentation. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. <laughs>